Welcome back to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Bagley. And today's conversation is actually a bonus call that we had inside the Hair of the Dog Academy, in which I was talking to my friend Robbie Yankish from YN Camera up in Youngstown, Ohio. Their website is www.ymcamera.com. And um, they are a great supplier of all things gear. So before you go shopping at B&H, uh, if you have any questions, like you can get great personalized service from them. Uh, but anyway, during our conversation, Robbie and I are diving deep into DSLR versus mirrorless. Is DSLR dead? Oh my gosh, all of the good conversations. We're talking about the latest models of Canon, Nikon, and Sony. Uh, what people might want to start off with if you're kind of in the market for a new camera or you're looking to upgrade or you're getting your first camera. Then we're also going to be talking about all of that lighting and is Godox really as good as um, people think it is. So yeah, all sorts of great conversations. I uh, hope you enjoy this conversation and next time you need to get some new gear, definitely check out YM Camera to help you um, with that. They ship all over the United States. All right, without further ado, here's our conversation. Welcome, everybody. Special bonus Academy call this month where we have uh, Robbie from YM Camera joining us from the great town of Youngstown, Ohio, which is right outside of Pittsburgh, not too far from my old stomping grounds, uh, which is how I got connected with Robbie. So, hey, Robbie, welcome to the welcome to the Academy gear talk time. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. Well, actually, first, Robbie, do you want to tell us a little bit about YM Camera and all that just good stuff of... Yeah, of definitely. Yeah. yeah. So I'm Robbie. I'm uh, one of the owners here of YM Camera. We're a full-service camera store in Northeast Ohio. Uh, we're a third-generation family business. My grandfather started it in 1951. My father took it over in the 80s, and now he's passing the torch to me. And uh, we sell a lot of cameras. We we sell Nikon, Canon, Sony, Fuji, uh, Panasonic, Tamron lenses, Sigma, uh, and you know we're we're really blessed to say that we that 2022 was our best year in company history. So we are the camera industry is good right now uh, for many reasons I'm going to talk about today. Uh, but yeah, we're we're in Northeast Ohio, full service. We sell we sell a lot of cameras, and uh, we hire all photographers here on staff. So it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we do like about our business is about 65% in store, but we do a ton of mail order. We got uh, uh, customers from all over the United States. And uh, I'm I'm our main guy here. I do all our ordering. So all those awesome camera companies, I work with Nikon, Canon, Sony every single day um, to, you know, bring more gear in. And, you know, I could tell you what gear is hot, what's selling, what's not. And uh, all the ins and outs. I'm I'm pretty good at megapixels. What what, what battery? What what camera? What takes? How many focusing <laughs> points? So I can I can get really in the weeds if you want, where I can tell you, <laughs> hey, this camera is good for you. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, I've ordered some stuff from them. They are fantastic. If you guys need any gear, definitely um, yeah. check it out. Give a give Robbie a call. But I know there's probably going to be a lot of discussion today about mirrorless versus DSLR and all of that stuff, because I mean, that's been the hot topic in the camera industry for about at least the past year. If you guys have questions, specific questions, as it comes up, feel free to pop them in the chat. We can also, you can also unmute if you have a quick question, you know, that's fine too. This is a super casual uh, space so that you guys can get some of your questions answered. So don't be shy, but I'm thinking maybe do you want to kind of start off and just kind of talk about that elephant in the room, mirrorless versus DSLR? Is DSLR dying? Like, what's happening? DSLR isn't dying. I, I think it's officially dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if, if, if it don't hang it on to their 5D Mark IV, their D850. They're, they're, they're like, if you look at, go to Canon's website, go to Nikon's website, you, know, you got to dig deep. They don't want to sell no DSLRs anymore. They are completely done, unfortunately. They, you know, with, if you look at Nikon, they have the D850 left, the D6 and the D780. They have three DSLRs left. Uh, and if you look at all of them right now, like everything's on sale for their spring savings, their their uh, Mother's Day savings event, besides the DSLRs. I think 850 has like a hundred bucks off or something like that. <laughs> so it's, 
you know, we, we started seeing it in 2020 and, you know, 2019, 2020, when the Z series and, and uh, the EOS R from Canon really started, to, uh, you know, taking hold of the industry and just it's less and less. I get these emails. I'm like, hey, if you want to, you know, like a 14 millimeter EF lens, it's like not available anymore. They're going to transition mm-hmm. that to the, you know, mirrorless RF versions or the Nikon Z versions. So it seems like they, you know, it, it's not a hidden thing that Nikon and Canon, you know, the big two of the DSLRs are definitely out. And it's mainly because Sony, you know, was eating Nikon and Canon's lunch uh, uh, just with the popularity of their A7 series. So they had like the A7 III, the A7R III. Um, they had all the third party support from Nikon uh, or from Sigma and Tamron lenses and the fantastic Sony lenses too. And uh, just seeing with, you know, Nikon's latest launch, uh, last week they announced a new camera, the Nikon Z8. Um, it, you know, they're they're fully committed away from the DSLR. Not saying DSLRs aren't great, not saying probably maybe even the best photographers in the world, you still use an 850 in their bag and their 5D, but, it, you know, there's just going to be a, a limit on them in where it's like, you know, if, if someone walks in and says, hey, I'm getting into photography, maybe want to make some money on it and, uh, you know, make a business or even a hobbyist, it's kind of hard not to be like, well, you know, there's there's a future with mirrorless where, you know, DSLRs and the DSLR lenses, um, everything's out is going to be out. There's going to be no one coming out with a D850 Mark II or a 5D Mark V now or a 1DX4. Um, it's, you know, it's the transitions here, the train has left the station entirely. Yeah, I think it was last year that Canon said that they're not going to do any more development on any EF lenses anymore. Yeah, that's the, uh, we will not see another EF lens. We will not see another F mount lens. From yeah. Nikon. That's like a hundred percent. Now that being said, if you guys are out there and you like maybe have your mirrorless camera and you're like, man, I would really love to get some lenses. The because I'm still shooting almost all of my EF lenses on my R5 with an adapter. Yeah. And man, I'm slowly but surely gonna start to move over there with all of it's, the things. One lens. You know, it's time. if you look at the you know the price of the RF 24 to 70 or an RF 7200 to 2.8, they're expensive and they're expensive because they're new builds. You know, mm-hmm. the mold for your 70 to 200 EF is the same one they've been using since 2003 with your original 7200. They, they all look the same. They're all the same weight, you know, like they're, but now if you look at the RF 7200, it's half the weight and super small and tiny and stuff like that. So that's the reason, because it's R and D and then new molds, new technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why the lenses are so expensive. But you know, if you look when you have your, you know, your your R five, and then you have that adapter, it's like this thick. You know, mm-hmm. it's like an inch in there, and then your lens fits on. You know, when you remove that space from a, uh, which you go to RF lens right onto an RF body, that decreases that flange distance. Uh, it's a really small distance, which gets that glass in that lens so close to that sensor, which is going to give you the sharper shots. So mm-hmm. you will see an improvement with autofocus ability and edge to edge sharpness when using native mirrorless glass on a mirrorless body. Okay, good to know. I didn't realize that was the reason why. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, ironically, my 7200 EF is sharper on my R5 than it was on my. 1dx <laughs> 100 yeah like, even like, with the, it, so it's even with the old yeah. lens on the new mirrorless camera is a step up from what it was on my dslr and i can't even imagine what it'll be once i get the actual rf see, i think people have been kind of poisoned in their mind because i uh let's say you know what i here's an r5 you already have the trinity of lenses let me sell you this adapter and like they immediately go to like all right how much light am i losing <laughs> how much autofocus ability I'm losing. And I, I got to start the conversation early and say, no, it's just, a, it's, if you look at it, it's just a piece of metal and uh-huh. it just connects that lens to that body. You don't lose any light. So if you are an existing Nikon or Canon shooter and you get that adapter, you're not losing any light you're, and you're not losing any focus ability. You're only gaining features because now all the bodies have stabilization inside the bodies. So they actually work better with the DSLR lenses. Wow. All right, cool fantastic i'm obsessed with my 1dx or not my 1dx my r5 i used to be obsessed camera. with my 1dx i love my r5 um <laughs> definitely what's what's the rumor on the it's gonna be the r1 
It's, yeah. It's, um, so it's it's kind of weird just comparing where the releases are right now because yeah. it seems like Canon kind of missed a release cycle alongside Sony and Nikon. So I think they're maybe on a couple month delay. Yeah. So where Nikon, their current mirrorless lineup, I'm not going to go on the whole thing right now, is a Z6 II and Z7 II for easy purposes. That's like a D750 for the Z6 II or a D810 for the Z7 II. And then the Z9 is their flagship. That's their mm-hmm. $5,500. Uh, that's like your 1DX where it has the integrated battery grip. And they just announced a camera that's coming out next week in between that called the Z8. I'll talk more about that later too. But now Canon, they have an R6 Mark II and an R5. So we're kind of, and then the R3. So we're yeah. missing one model, either an R5 successor or in a model above the R3, which would be the R1. So yeah. I, I, I would say before the end of the year, we're going to see at least an R5 successor. And by the 2024 Olympics, we're going to see the R1, which is going to be their $7,000 round number. I made it up, uh, you know, flagship camera. You know, the, these companies are so with big glass and big bodies, they are driven by the Olympics. That's yeah, so, you will right. see something by 2024. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I want to dive into like the Canon bodies and the Nikon bodies, and then we can yeah. talk about Sony uh, Fuji a bit too. But um, before we get to Nikon, with Canon, you know, the R6, R5, R3 are the three ones out right now. Yeah. R3 is significantly more. Well, what are the general price points of those three? Uh, R3, top of, top of head here. I can go on my website. Yeah. But I think it's around 55 or uh, 6,500 bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I know that one was expensive. Yeah, that, that one's yeah. 24 megapixels, bunch of focusing points. Um, people were surprised when I, I think they didn't put us like 50 megapixels or 40 into it. Right after the, the R5, the yeah. R5. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then the R5 is still, what's that around these days? Approximately? That's actually a really good sale right now. Those are $33.99. Okay. You free battery grip uh, through most, most USA Canon dealers. And then the R6 II is $24.99. So you're 2,500, gotcha. 3,400 round numbers and, and around six for okay. the R3. What are as pet photographers who are talking to now? So we need good focusing. We need um, like, you know, some good, um, like the high speed. I'm not technical, <laughs> you know, the to-do, high speed uh, shutter. Um, yeah. What are like, which body? I know people shoot with actually, I don't know that many people have R3 because so many of us got the R5 and we're like, oh, I don't need to spend that much more money to get to upgrade right now. But um, are all three of those bodies, do you think, kind of, what are the pros and cons, I guess, of why you might want to go a different one for pet photography? You know, they're, all three are going to be more than capable enough to shoot pet photography. And it's a decision you have to make between the top two. So, uh, you know, hey, I have the R5 here. Yep, the R3 is technically going to focus a little bit faster and give you more frames per second, but you're having your resolution. So mm-hmm. if you're a big printer, big cropper, Kind of go with the R5. And that's where I think the R1, the one we're going to see later, is really going to answer a lot of questions where yeah. it's going to be high resolution and fast, ultimate camera, you know, the, yeah, the desert island camera, if you will. But uh, it's, uh, so it's, yeah, you're definitely at a crossroads if you want resolution speed. Where in the R6 II, this is going to be nice because it's $2,500. I mean, we're all gearheads here. That's not crazy, crazy expensive for a camera. And you're going to get some of the focusing features from the R the R3, and we're going to get that 24 megapixels. But you know, if if you're purely speed and you're okay with 24 megapixels on a full frame sensor, you know, R3 is technically going to be best in class for focusing and speed. But I still think R5 is one of the best values. And Canon has kind of changed their business model a lot. Now we're seeing significant firmware updates. Yeah, uh, Nicole, mm. did you up? Did you update your? No, R5? I need to upgrade mine. I need to update it. So you got to update it because they just added uh, some enhanced focus features and some uh, multi-shot modes that would probably do you pretty well. Mm. So if you have a, if you're Nikon, Canon, Fuji, Sony, they have all changed their tune on this. You have to update your cameras, your firmware, because they're adding in features. It used to be like these little minor. If you use this button in you know, whatever, right. it'd be like the, the most silly use case scenario fixing with firmware updates. Now the firmware updates do a ton. 
Yeah. All right. Good to know. Um, public service announcement. I'll get on that. <laughs> um, for the R6, is the R6 full frame or crop sensor? R6 II is their latest one. It's replaced the original R6. Uh, the R6 II is full frame. Yep. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, so really it's the resolution between the R6 and the R5 would be the big difference right. between those two. Yeah. 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 You know, honestly, and like the R3 is an awesome camera. Like we haven't sold a ton of those. I thought that would be like a. It's a big price like, jump for not a, like the R5 is such a good camera. <laughs> that's the hard point. Canon made too good of a camera with the R5. People were too happy with it. People were like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It, the color out of the camera, the sensor is really good. Yeah. You know, but technically speaking, the R3 should be faster focusing. Uh, it just lock on focus faster and better in low light. But that, that R5 is a very special camera. Yeah, it's awesome. All right, cool. All right, well, I don't want to forget about our Nikon peeps. So I know nothing I'm Nikon about guy. Nikon cameras. Talk, so sorry, guys, I'm not out. But uh, <laughs> no, Nikon's in a really good space right now with like kind of four full frame cameras that they're really focusing on. Yeah. With their top ones being Z9, that's $5,500. Uh, the reviews are phenomenal. 45 megapixels, a stack sensor, bunch of frames per second, CF Express card dual. I'll talk memory a little bit later too. Um, but that's 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 the best of the best for Nikon. Like there's, yeah. you know, if you put your native Z glass on there, the lock on time is incredible. The video is really good. The ergonomics and menus are improved. Uh, we sell a lot of that camera. That's that for 2021 and 2022, that was our best selling camera. That what's, the, what's the price point on the Z9? 5,500 bucks. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's about, about average for that, you know, the top of the line one. You know, but um, awesome. Yeah. It, it's kind of like, you know, your 1DX mm -hmm. or if you're coming off your D6, um, it, that does have the integrated battery grip you can't remove. Yep. Um, so, but and now Nikon announced last week that, you know, uh, May 26 here. So that's the ne next Thursday, next Friday. Um, they're coming out with the uh, Z8, which is kind of like the baby brother to the Z9. Yeah. Which is going to be 4,000 bucks. So you're saving $1,500 with it. And it's pretty much identical specs to the Z9, but no integrated battery grip. So it's going to mm. look more like your R5 or your D850. Yep. And the pre-orders on that one's been really, really strong. That's going to be a, an awesome camera. Yeah, nice. I know the R5 has changed the way I shoot a bit. And I actually okay. kind of like it not having that battery grip because we want to get low so I can get like put my camera on the ground. And then with that flip out screen, I'm just like, oh, I no longer have to lay on the ground nearly as much as I used to. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'm very big on the no integrated battery grips for my shooting personally. I, I don't like having the extra bulk of the battery yeah. grip. Like that 1DX is too big for me. I just, that, that's fine. But some people are like, I love that grip. I love shooting portrait mode with it and yeah. stuff. No, but, uh, I liked I totally... it. I loved my 1DX and I liked the big bulk. Yeah, I've gotten man hands. Now you can see like my I little, right I now, little, but, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I like the big thing, bigger up. All right. Christopher has a question though, about, um, what gear would you recommend for someone starting pet photography and with under a $1,500 budget? I have a thought here, but I want to, I want to hear your thought. Um, all right. So there's two really good entry level models. So, uh, that you have, I'm like all jacked up here. Sorry. Uh, still Nikon, Canon, Sony, um, like Nikon has a Z5, which is full frame mirrorless, thousand bucks. And then we can maybe get the adapter and uh, maybe find an order lens to work, work for you. Or I think they have a kit too, where you can get like a 24 to 70 for around 1500. Canon has the R8, which is right at your budget at 1499 body only. It is full frame, it is mirrorless. And then Sony has the A7 series, which is the A7 III, which you could pick up new or used for a really good price usually, but I would, uh, uh, I would definitely like a hundred percent try to get a mirrorless body one way or the other, just, mm -hmm. just so you're buying for buying for the future. Um, yeah. yeah so it, like a used Sony a seven, we'll talk about Sony here in a bit too, would be a really good. Yeah. Yeah. And I would almost say too, like if there's any way to scrape together the extra thousand bucks to at least just jump in at like the R six level, uh, I think that camera is going to serve you better for a longer time, where some of those really entry level cameras, you can outgrow with the low light settings or the um, yeah. it's way harder to capture action and things like that than the ones that are able to focus a little bit better. Um, 
So yeah. Yeah. It's the only thing like that. the thing I yeah. kind of hate is I do get a lot of young, younger people in here, people wanting to start out. And I talked a lot about buying in the right direction. Mm-hmm. You don't want to spend money in the wrong direction because you're going to spend money twice. If you have yep. to replace that body and then you're buying lenses that are only work for that body that won't work for mirrorless. It, it just like, you know, I, it used to be the flip, like, Hey, get a cheaper body, get a really good lens, but it's kind of at a difficult crossroads because we're seeing the exit of DSLRs where you want to get a mirrorless body. That's just straight up. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so you can invest in that mirrorless glass sooner than later. Yeah, no, that's good. Good call for sure. All right. So there are a couple of Sony people out there. Give us the haps on, on their lineup. Yeah, Sony eclipsed, uh, you know, like it, like my shop traditionally, not nationally at all, where I did Nikon, Canon, and Sony. Like this past year, it's been Sony number two or number oh, one. Oh, I don't love very, Sony. Very I feel proper. like, I don't know, maybe it's just I've been a Canon shooter way too long. Like it feels just not native and just like I, I can't even, I can't even handle it. <laughs> yeah, like, and it's kind of funny you said that because they definitely responded to that. Yeah. They, with their newest releases, they completely redid the menu systems. So okay. the, the menu feels a lot better. Like I always joked around that Sony five years ago, they were technically the best cameras, but they right. were made for nerdy guys. Like the, you know, <laughs> like someone who really loved diving into the menus and but uh now they're they're really good. Like uh their flagship is called the A1. Yep. And uh, doesn't have an integrated battery grip, $6,500. And uh, where Sony wins right now is they have the most complete system. Uh, they okay. have more lenses than Nikon and Canon native to the system. So, you know, they, they have options. If you want a Sigma art lens, you can get it native to Sony. If you want a Tamron telephoto or a wide angle, you can get it for Sony. That's what they're really doing well is partnering with those third-party companies. And they they have a really fleshed out lens line right now. And they're doing like a bunch of trade-in promotions nationally, which is really cool. But uh, right now, just to kind of give you the high-level three models to look at, would be the A1 as their flagship. That's going to be super fast, 50 megapixels, and that one checks a lot of boxes. Then you got the A7R5. And so they're on the fifth iteration of their R. Their R stands for resolution. Um, And that's a 60 megapixel camera, uh, really quick. And I think that one's around 3899. And then in their competitive space, the under $3,000 category, they got the A7 IV, which is $2,500, 33 megapixels, uh, full frame. And that one is definitely the best selling camera, like for Sony, just by large or far. You get a lot of camera for $2,500. Yeah. I get a, everyone comes in and says, hey, I, I'm looking at the Sony A7, uh, A7 IV, the, the Canon R6 II, and the Nikon Z6 II. That's yeah. like the, that's the three you got to, you know, uh, you, you got to choose between right now. Love it. Um, you mentioned the Tamron and Sigma lenses. Yeah. How are those lenses on say um, like Nikon, Canon, like are they, have they been working well with these different mirrorless systems or like, are they starting to change their lenses to be working better with mirrorless versus DL- yeah. DSLR? Great question. Um, so uh, Tamron, if you have existing Tamron lenses and Sigma lenses, you can actually buy this thing that plugs into the computer that will update the lens to work better via those adapters. Huh. Um, and then- uh, Is it like Sigma updating makes, a firmware on it? Yeah, you can actually update the firmware on a lens now. It's nuts. Oh, wow. Yeah. God, so much firmware updating. Oh. <laughs> it's, I know, it's important now. It's like another part of the, yeah, <laughs> more steps to do. But, uh, and then Sigma- um is starting to make lenses for Nikon and so is Tamron. We haven't seen any mirrorless Tamron or Sigma lenses just yet. But uh okay. they are switching out. They're, you know, they're going to bend with the market and start mm-hmm. making more lenses for Nikon and Canon for sure. That would be nice. Yeah. Okay, awesome, interesting. Um Ashley, cool. Ashley has a question about the Z8. Um do you think it'll have a better subject tracking system than the Z62? Hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and look at any review of Z9 versus Z62, and if you're going to see that it's better, because the tracking system from the Z uh, from the Z9 is going right in Z8, and it's going to mm. be a little bit updated too. We're actually having a touch and try. We have a Nikon in 
June 1st, I'm excited, uh, where they're, we're doing like a launch party for the Z8, but oh, yeah, fun. that's going to be really cool. Any of you guys near uh, Cleveland, Youngstown, go check it out. I love it. Touch and try. <laughs> um, Angie has a question too about landscape travel photography. Um, when she's traveling, she doesn't always want, um, want to lug your gear. What's your question, Angie, about it? Wow, Is I'm it photography when I'm traveling, but don't always lug my gear with me. I mean, that's a kind of cool thing, you know, even if you buy like the R5, Z8, Z6 II, or a Sony A7, I mean, they're technically full-size bodies, but they make like pancake lenses or little short zoom lenses. Like, especially Sony, they have this one, it's called the A7C. So if you've been like curious about Sony mirrorless, that's a really small compact body that's not like, it's like the size of a phone, but really kind of th obviously thicker. Um, and they have some smaller pancake lenses for that. And then Fuji is a very good option. Uh, we don't do a ton of Fuji sales. I stock every camera by them, but uh, it seems like 90% of my, my sales and what we're seeing in the market is full frame mirrorless, but Fuji is a good option for travel cameras too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fuji has some, some nice little ones. Actually, Fuji has that, um, what is it? Their full frame, not it's full frame. It's more than frame. They're, they're, frame. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. What's the term for that one? Is it their GFX? Is that what it is? GFX. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Yeah. Yeah. What's that one? Uh, uh, what, uh, what's the term of that kind of camera that I'm looking for that I has- Medium escaped? format. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, it's some kind of format. <laughs> it's a, it's, yeah. So that's a large sensor. I think for anything high, like those are good for like, architecture commercial jobs and stuff like that yeah. i don't know how well that's going to be tracking some cute pups and stuff like that yeah but, uh, yeah. yeah my friend craig um from photography in new zealand he's a fuji ambassador so he has a gfx and yeah it, it does not work for any sort of motion or right. action but um but he does create some ridiculous things for portraits but uh those are cool cameras definitely yeah. i think those are, you know i think those are still they've had three or four models, but I still think they're a little bit in the infancy still. Yeah. Like I think they're still really getting, I don't know. I don't know how well full frame is just, it, it, it that's like 90% of the market share. It's just, yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's going to say they're probably not. I mean, the, the amount of people buying medium format is probably way smaller percentage than people buying the normal free full Definitely. frame cameras. All right, cool. What else? Well, actually, let me ask you this question too. DSLR versus mirrorless with like dynamic range capture is, have you seen a difference? Is it better on the mirrorless or a wider range? You know, I, I think it is better on the mirrorless, but not because it's mirrorless, but because they're just improving the image sensors. Like yep. that's the, like that's going to be the main, main point about it. Uh, especially in the Sony route. Like, I don't know if you've ever tried to edit a Sony file. It's like cake batter you can do whatever you want with that thing. Like the, the, if you need to pull highlights or cover shadows, like they're the dynamic range on some of their cameras is just absolutely nuts. Same with Nikon. And then Canon was kind of the ones that didn't have the crazy dynamic range. Yeah. If you did need to, you've got clipping or pull shadows, but now with your R5, like you probably see such a big difference between 5D files and mm -hmm. 1DX files and that beautiful raw file out of the R5. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it still gets pretty noisy sometimes, depending. I actually just had a shoot uh, two weeks ago uh, at the Raptor Center for um, a marketing campaign that they're doing. And the Raptor Center is all in like deep woods. And so it was dark and I'm capturing flying birds. So I need like fast shutter speed, man, on one noise uh, reduction to the rescue for those suckers. <laughs> Yeah, uh, didn't they just put a denoise thing in Lightroom to too, like Topaz or something or AI? Um, or something? I don't know. They might have updated it a little bit. That on one, the on one software, I think it was like sixty bucks, and it's just like a buy out. once. Yeah. It was, it's amazing. It's it awesome. unbelievable. <laughs> so, if anybody needs some uh, denoising, check it out. What uh, what other questions do you guys have out there? for uh gear it doesn't all have to be bodies um it could be some other lenses and um or lighting what kind of lighting do you guys carry at ym uh you guys you do know, godox and all those we do no. godox <laughs> yeah we used to do like pro photo and uh like canon flashes and nikon flashes man i can't give that stuff away right now they're like now nah, give me that 179 dollar godox flash that's rechargeable and wireless i'm like yeah it's kind of hard to no, <laughs> that's compete. like those are really good like guys so <laughs> you sell a ton of godox that's and like 
I always look at like pro photo and like, and you know, like I, I have room for it, but I'm just not like getting that many asks. Yeah. So I probably should bring a bit of pro photo in because that is a premium product. That's the Rolex. Yeah. Um, but uh, that Godox stuff, it, it, it's the real deal. We saw a ton of that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, if somebody's looking for like a Godox, like a strobe to use outside that's powerful enough to, you know, overpower the sun a bit. Um, but it's still portable enough to take with. Is there a certain model that you recommend? Yeah, I really like the AD 400 Pro. It's 400 watt seconds. They also have a baby version of it called the AD 200, 200 watt seconds. And that's our best selling flash product because it's $300. It's like the size of a flash and works perfectly off camera. So that one's really cool. That's awesome. Do those um, have TTL or are they? Uh... Yep, all TTL. And, they, and you can put a remote commander on yep. top of your camera. And okay. then you actually don't have to buy for the system for the mono lights, the battery powered ones. Uh, you just buy the triggers. So if you have a Canon and Nikon for some reason, yeah. they're all just into, you know, you can power them from any trigger. Oh, cool. nice. Okay. High speed sync on the Godox too? High speed sync, 8,000 8, of a second. Wow. How about a uh, flash duration? How's that compare with like the Pro Photo? Because the Pro Wonderful. Photo has a pretty quick flash duration for yeah, like stopping man. some action. Come on. You're asking me, you were asking me so many softballs and stuff like that, like one point three second flash duration i didn't the quarter kill me here the flash okay duration. sorry sorry i was sorry. doing so good i don't need I the actual the like amount i'm just wondering if it's fairly compatible to, quick. comparable they're, they're to. very quick okay all right <laughs> Re recycle speed all right we're gonna keep on going no um yeah i've heard a lot of people i haven't used the godox um i've had some pro photos from ages ago that still work great so obviously still using those yeah just use those, um, use those to yeah <laughs> yeah um but i've heard so many people have really enjoyed their godox gear um yeah um oh jess is asking a canon question here do you think if they release a new version of the r5 they'll discontinue the original like they did for the r6 so so actually the r6 mark one is still available um i think we have one in stock we because th there's a three four hundred dollar delta so the R6, I think, is round numbers twenty one hundred dollars. The R62 is twenty five hundred. They'll keep that R5 around. These camera companies aren't discontinuing cameras like they used to. It's it's really weird. Sony, you can buy a camera that came out in like twenty thirteen. I'm like, why? Really? Yeah. Like you could buy the original Z6, which came out in twenty seventeen. So they'll still keep them in the lineup, but they. They, they keep the pricing very specific. They don't want, if, if the new camera's $3,000, they're not going to take that old model to 1200 bucks. Yeah, no, they want to be like, yeah. hey, you can save three or 400 bucks just to get rid of the existing inventory, but we don't want to shy new, new customers away from the new releases. So you'll yeah. see, there's some like, definitely some, you know, some, some, some baseball there with how they do the numbers and stuff like that with discontinuing and discounting older models. Yeah. All right. Cool. Good, good, good. Oh, Lauren's asking too, we're talking uh, body still. What do, things that you like, dislike about the Z6 II? Z6 II is a great camera. Um, you know, compared to the Z8 or Z9, the focusing system is going to be a little more robust on their flagship models, of course, because they're $2,000, yeah. $3,000, $4,000 more expensive. 6.2 is one of our, that's our best selling Nikon camera though. Other than the, yeah, we know we sell more of those in the Z9 just Purely a price point. Thing. Yeah, right. Well, those things are like seventeen hundred bucks body only right now. The value is insane on that. that how really is. how is their focusing for things like a running dog? Really good. They like uh, you know, the original Z six and seven. Some people did have some issues. Yeah. If you're using native glass in the Z series, and you're on the latest firmware, seems like they're doing a really, really good job. And uh, they, and they do have eye auto focus for dogs, which is really nice. Oh, and, nice. Uh, no, the 6.2 is incredibly good value, gets you in the Z series. And it's like, if you've been holding out and you're like, I have a D750, that's the clear upgrade path would be the Z6.2. Hmm. Okay. All right. I was wondering too, if you could speak a little bit about gray market cameras and what that means and what people need to be aware of. Yeah, definitely. So uh, if it's, you know, like, you know, my big thing is if you walk in my store, you're not going to pay or you shop online, you're not going to pay a penny more with me than you will with B&H. You know, that's the thousand pound gorilla in the room. They're a six billion dollar company. They sell more cameras than Amazon and all the other camera stores combined. That's that's that, that, that is what it is. 
same, you know, same with Adorama, same with Am the, some Amazon sellers, like if it comes from Amazon Direct, we're all going to be the same price. So if you're looking at Z62, you should be paying $16.96.95. If you see it for a dollar less, something's up because you're not allowed to sell that camera online for that below that price. So what that means is they're getting it from not Nikon USA. They're getting it from Nikon India and Nikon Japan, and they're illegally importing the models. Uh, so there, it carries no warranty, and the camera will not be repairable for any amount of money within the United States. So if it's worth saving 200 bucks, and you're never going to drop it, never going to break it, never need service, and may, may not work with future firmware updates, do it. But I, I would say, do not, like, you can call Nikon and you can call Canon and Sony. And you can ask, hey, is this seller who's selling at this price? Are they gray market? Mm. And we'll tell you. So they're, stay away from gray market. If the deal is too good to be true, it's too good to be true for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They, cause those, all the manufacturers basically fix the price of it has to be this. So if you're seeing right. it outside yeah. of that, it is, it is not legit. Yeah, I, the, I know a couple people that have accidentally like they just didn't know. It's something that you don't know when you yeah, you know you you're going to get a deal like you just less and you're like, oh, well, like, why I would I pay more? Um, I, I just it's it just it sucks because I've had people in tears. Oh. Hey, I dropped my seventy two hundred two eight. We send it in. Nikon just sends it back with a letter saying this is not repairable in the United States. What wow, do you do? You have a doorstop it sucks. <laughs> you have to like fly to India and get it repaired there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, oh man. Um, your website, is it just uh ymcamera.com? Yep, ymcamera.com. Uh, you know, we're uh we're a smaller company, so we uh but we try to keep everything on there. We do have a really cool texting feature on there, which goes right to my phone and other people's phones. So if you have any questions, please, you know, we're uh we're, like we're, we don't have the resources as the B and H website. We actually we're on B and H more than you guys because we we use them for our pricing models and stuff. <laughs> but uh, just call us or text us or email us. We're really responsive like that and can help you out. Awesome, yeah, you guys. I bought some gear from Robbie and uh, the YM crew, and they're fantastic. And it arrives sometimes faster than B and H or any of the other ones. So uh, fantastic, definitely highly recommend. I think that's it. Anything else you want to say, Robbie, before we wrap up? No, but just, you know, look at your, you know, what camera you have if you're thinking about going to mirrorless and kind of look at the lenses out there. Like Nikon just released 85.12. Canon has like a really nice 135.18. If you, know, you can you, get that one. Do you have that one in stock? I text me. I got you. Don't <gasps> I don't, I, I don't have it in stock, but I got a lead on one. I think it's okay, coming in like all right. yeah, you're good. I get you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you're, you, we talk so much with the bodies. But we actually don't talk enough about how good the glass is. And like, yeah, it's, they're a pretty penny for sure. But the image quality on the new lenses, like they change that lens mount on those new cameras for a reason. They're yeah. gorgeous. Those lenses It's awesome. ridiculous. I mean, and it was just crazy. My evolution of starting to shoot with that R5 with my old lenses and the adapter. And I was still like, oh my God, these are better than they were on the 1DX. But then um, when I would teach with Charlotte, uh, Charlotte Reeves from Unleashed Education that we teach the Barkas together. I would look at hers because she had all the native lenses. She sold all her stuff and got all the the new um, RF lenses. And I was just like, what? Shut the door. It's amazing. You know, because Nikon before, back in the DSLR days, it always seemed like the Nikons were just a little bit sharper than Canon, but Canon had mm -hmm. like the most delicious, amazing color. So I was like, mm, fine. Yeah. I want my color. I love my Canon. Um, but now you've got like the color on the Canon and the sharpness with these new lenses. It's, oh, I know I'm just like, so like, you, like you should, they're 51 two by Canon. It's like crazy. It's really good. <laughs> awesome. And one, it. I'll leave it on this too. Canon users check out that 28 to 70 F2 to F2 zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Oh my gosh. All right. This has been so, so good. If you guys want to go uh, check out all the stuff Robbie can help you out with ymcamera.com. If you guys have questions about gear, um, don't be shy reaching out over there. And um, yeah, thanks Robbie for taking the time to chat, chat, uh, you know, tech nerd stuff with us. <laughs> I do this all day. This is what I love. This is fun. These are right in my wheelhouse, but yeah, it falls on Instagram. We do a bunch of fun giveaways and stuff like that, a bunch of film and 
you can dm us and uh if you follow us too we love like posting people on our stories and like dogs and stuff so please follow us on instagram that's where we do a lot of fun stuff but awesome don't Is hesitate it- call me email me if you ever have any questions about any gear and you're like what's going on just i'll help you out for sure all right perfect and it's uh instagram's ym camera yep all right perfect awesome all right thanks everybody for joining us and uh robbie thanks again for being here and uh, we will talk to you guys soon i right, appreciate it cool thank you bye everybody bye.